Hello and welcome to my advanced overclocking video. And by advanced overclocking, I mean we're actually going to do it this time. The last one is more of a theory video, and to be honest, I don't think I did that great a job with it. Today we're going to be using 3D Mark, my preferred stress test and image marking tool, and AMD's built-in overclocking software in their driver. I far prefer, the, prefer this to MSI Afterburn as it gives you much more in-depth control, as you will see in a second. Before we start overclocking though, we should take a baseline. I'm going to go ahead and fire up 3D Mark, which you can find on Steam, and run a test. Once 3D Mark's open, all you have to do to run the benchmark is click over to Time Spy, and then if you don't have the pro version, you will have to run the demo. I have the pro version, so I will not be using the demo. Uh, the demo basically is just like a kind of showcase of the benchmark, and I think we'll put a little more stress on the GPU, but since this is just a baseline we're trying to see how it performs, I'm not going to use it. So let's go ahead and let that run and see what the results are. Okay, there we go. As you can see here, the graphics score was 3,806 and the CPU score is 6,045. So I'm going to go ahead and save this to documents as baseline R9390X run. So I am running an R9390X in here that I got off of eBay for about $100 and the goal is to see if I can have it run comparably to my RX 580 that I also bought off of eBay for around $100. This card is two times a VRAM of my RX 580, and if it can run as fast, even though it's not supported by drivers, it might be a compelling value option. But we're gonna need a pretty significant overclock to beat that because the other card is running substantially faster. I forgot the exact numbers, but I think we need to pick up at least a few hundred points, which I doubt will happen. But anyway, let's go ahead and get into overclocking. So the first thing before I actually open up the Radeon overclocking tool is I'm going to open Hardware Info. Now this is a really helpful tool because it allows you to see all sorts of things like temps and voltages and that type of thing with your computer. And especially since if you saw my uh, GPU repasting video, I accidentally put K5 on the heat sinks on some parts of the VRAMs. So I want to monitor that and make sure that's not overheating as well as just in general, this card already pulls on like 275 watts stock, and I want to make sure that it just plain as an overheating. So this is a free tool, really helpful, I'm just going to pop it on my monitor over here. So I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it, but I'll be referring to it uh, with temperatures and stuff as we go. So let me find my GPU in it, and now I can keep tabs on all the temps and stuff as we're overclocking. So the first thing you're going to want to do is open up all of these sub options. Just click all the enables. And I'm going to take the power limit and just crank it. As in basically, the car can now pull basically as much power as it wants to with that. Now, I don't know if this will actually increase in a power draw, like show a measurable increase in power draw, or especially the measurable increase in performance, just doing that on this card. But I do believe that some of the newer cards, when they recognize they have more power, can go faster. But we need to modify the clock. And we're also probably going to need to increase the voltage, but it looks like on this card, we can't go any higher on that voltage. So the only thing we're gonna be able to do on this card is increase the power limit and increase the clock. On some cards, most in my understanding, you're able to increase that voltage and you probably want to increase by about 10 millivolts at first, maybe only five, You kind of your choice, but Increase by 5 or 10, feel it out, see what type of clocks you're getting, and then once you start crashing, try increasing the voltage a little bit more and see if you get a measurable increase in performance or if your card is just kind of, you know, leveled off and that's about the most you're going to get. But especially since we're not able to increase the voltage here, I'm only going to go in small increments. And I usually only will do about 10 megahertz, and then once that starts crashing, I'll go 5, that type of thing. But I'm going to go and try for 1050 megahertz on the core. Now, I'm not going to modify my memory clocks yet, because if you modify both at the same time, you really don't know which one made it crash. So I'm only doing 10 megahertz on the core, and then I'm going to go ahead and run that benchmark again and see what type of performance we're getting, as well as check the stability. Normally, I would use the stress test for this, because it's built for that, and just I find it's a little bit easier to loop for longer. But the stress test costs money. You need the pro version, and while it's oftentimes pretty cheap, Especially if you're just getting into this, it doesn't make much sense to spend five bucks when you can just click run benchmark. So let's go ahead and run that and see what performance we get. 
Okay, we just successfully completed that rung, so hopefully we're stable. It's not really a great stress test to say to just run one benchmark. That does not necessarily mean we save a long-term in games. But for the purposes of just overclocking, it's fine. You kind of push it up as high as it'll go, and then you have to dial back a bit as you find that your game has put lo different loads on the cards for different amount of times, that type of thing. Of time, that type of thing. So, uh, looking over here, our GPU VRAM maxed out at like 64, 65 degrees Celsius. That is perfectly fine. That's really cool. And our GPU memory temperature, all that was about 64 cel degrees Celsius as well. So we have tons of thermal headroom. room. Uh, power, we pulled a maximum of like 214 watts. That's a lot of power. Okay, well, let's go ahead and compare that score to our last one. So I'm going to save this as uh, plus 10 megahertz core R9390X. And then we're just going to remember the graphic score was 3825. Now I'm going to load the baseline one. And you can see here that we improved by like 19 points. Let's go ahead, ahead and add another 10 megahertz to our core clock here. And we'll run the benchmark again and see what will happen. This is just kind of what we're going to continue to do here to see if we're able to pick up any performance. Okay, so that test just completed successfully. And we are really picking up some points now. We're at 3,858, which is a substantial increase over that original score of like 3,809 or so. I'm surprised, or I think it was 3,806, I'm not sure. I'm surprised we had that much of an increase from the previous score of 3,825, but I mean, I'm not going to complain. So I'm going to go over here and check hardware info again. GPU VRAM maximum still perfectly fine, core perfectly fine. Uh, GPU core power max is 236 watts now. I don't remember if that's actually higher than it was last time, but yeah. We're going to go ahead and add another 10 megahertz. Go for 1070 now, apply the changes and run it again. And one quick note when you're doing this, you're probably going to want to be writing down what the last clock you had it at was, because if your system crashes, then you're going to lose your progress and you'll have to put all the you know, individual parameters in again. You can save the files, which I'll show you how to do in a second, but I often wait to do that until I have what I think is a stable overclock and then I'll save one to the documents folder so that it doesn't get reset if I have to do a factory set of the driver with my stable overclock or something, and then if I'm running multiple cards, the name of the card. But you're probably just running one, so just stable overclock, and it'll be a .txt or .xml file, I forget, forget exactly which, and you can just select it. But I'll show you that in a second. For now, set it to 1070, applying it, and running again. So another test completed successfully, this time at 1070 megahertz, and we're getting some marked improvements. I mean, 3,889 graphics score, that is like 80 points above what it was at the beginning. I don't know if this is stable in games. I'm probably going to do another two kind of iterations of the plus 10 megahertz and then run a stress test in 3D Mark to check. You can either use a game or Furmark. Furmark, I found, can be a little bit iffy with stress tests, especially when you're doing overclocking because it doesn't really let the clocks boost up as high as they normally can and I don't know if it does as great of a job evaluating it but hopefully it'll work just fine. So let's go ahead and go down here, change this to 1080 and after a quick look at our temps which are still fine I'm going to go ahead and run it again. Okay, yeah, another test completed successfully, and now we're at 3,920 points on our GPU score. That, if I remember correctly, might be getting dangerously close to the RX 580 I have. I really do not remember what the actual score for it is, which is a little bit awkward, but I will put that on the screen below, and you can look at that and compare them, because I don't remember. But anyway, I'm going to do one more step up of the plus 10 megahertz. And then I'm going to run a full stress test in 3D Mark to see if it runs stable. And what the stress tests in 3D Mark work, how they work, and one of the reasons I really like them, is they basically just loop that first GPU benchmark for like 20 minutes. And it'll do things like tell your frame stability, which isn't quite as important as figuring out like if your GPU has a stable overclock, I think. It's a helpful metric where if you have really low frame stability, that's not good. And you should try to figure out why that is, but I don't know if overclocking necessarily causes that. But I also find it just does a better job of kind of representing what an in-game workload would be like. So without further ado, let's kick this up to 1090. 
uh, by the changes, and I'm going to go ahead and run again. Okay, we completed another test, and now we're at 3,941 points for GPU score. I have my doubts about whether this will be uh, stable in a stress test, because we haven't really increased the voltage, and I'm pretty sure that the 390X has already pushed pretty close to the limit, so I'd be surprised if I was able to get this many more megahertz out of it, but also, I mean, it's an older card, there aren't as many, like, opportunistic boosting algorithms for it, so I think there might not be any at all, so who knows, maybe I just got a really good chip. Uh, looking at our temps, they're still perfectly fine. We have pulled more power now, so 244 watts. So now we are actually increasing our power draw, which in some ways can decrease the lifespan of the card. I will talk more about that towards the end of the video, so stay tuned for that. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and run the stress test. And if it does crash, I'm going to make sure to show you. Uh, I doubt OBS will record it, but I will be able to show you on the phone. So I'll go ahead and save this as uh, 1090, I believe it is, R9390X. And then go here. Yep, we're at 1090. I'm going to leave that. And I'm actually now going to export this file. So I'm going to save it to documents as 1090 megahertz core R9390X. And this way, when if it does crash and reset the driver i can come back to it and say okay well let's just reduce the you know clock by 10 or something and see what happens from there plus i think that way i don't have to click on all these little you know buttons and stuff to open up all the sub menus again so let's go ahead and click over to the stress test and start running it Well, and this is what an AMD crash report means. So if you see this, you know your card has crashed, and what you want to do is go ahead and close out. Then you want to go ahead and close out of the 3MD Mark workload, which sometimes you end up not really being able to do. Uh, but sometimes you can also just hit end task, and it works like in that case. And now we're going to go to the AMD Adrenaline driver again, re-import that overclock we just had that proved to be unstable. And we are going to try and dial back the clocks to 1080 megahertz on the core. And hopefully what that will do is allow us to run stably. We'll have a little bit less performance because we're running at a lower clock. But, you know, you got to do what you got to do. <laughs> Faster overclock isn't useful if it isn't stable. So we're going to go ahead and open up 3 Mark again and give it another go. Okay, as you can just see there, we're getting some more flashes um, and artifacting. That's not good. I'm going to go ahead and stop this and walk the clock down a little bit further and see if we want to stay with them. So we're going to go all the way back down to 1070. And this is kind of just how overclocking works. You push it up, you, you know, see that you're getting these great scores and you think you're going to get an awesome overclock and then you have to walk right down. And also over on our temperatures here, our GPU die and memory are at like 75, that's fine, but our VRAM one is actually at 90 degrees Celsius, uh, and we're pulling like 257 watts to the GPU. So I am, after I get this overclock done, actually going to try scraping off that K5 goop that I accidentally got in my VRAM and see if that reduces the temperature because that is a large disparity, and I'm guessing that. Uh, one of them has the goop on them, and the other doesn't. So, I'm going to run it again and hope that this time it's stable. Okay, so our stress test just finished, and it looked like it was fine. It says 99.3% uh, frame stability. I found that that isn't necessarily, like, your card's stable, but the frame stability is good, so yay. I did some research, and apparently 96 degrees Celsius is, like, fine on the VRMs. It's kind of hot. I'd rather not have it be that hot, but... Find at least to run with overclock, then I see if I can like turn up my fan some to bring that down. But so it looks like we are stable at 1070. There's a chance that maybe I could get it to go at 1080. Uh, this is kind of the point where you're like, okay, I'm stable here. Let's see, can I eke out a couple more megahertz or whatnot if you're into that? But temperatures are still where they were. They're higher than at stock, obviously, but 
they're perfectly fine. Um, we improved by a significant amount in terms of our score from beginning to end, and I think that's basically what the conclusion of this video is going to be, that you know, we improved. Now, there are a few things about overclocking that you should know before playing with it. So it will shorten the lifespan of your card. You're running more voltage through your circuits, which is going to degrade them over time, and that will also, and that's producing more heat, which can also degrade it over time if you can't dissipate it. So you'll probably need a better cooler than you have stock, unless you have already like a much beefier cooler on the card, or maybe you've repasted it with a higher performance thermal paste, that type of thing. You can check out my video for repasting on my channel. Uh, but it pro I, I don't think, as long as you aren't ramming tons of power through, it will really reduce the overall longevity by that much. And especially with older hardware that's already on its last legs. Like in some games, I'm getting maybe 30 FPS with this card. It's barely working as is. Overclocking it so that maybe I can get to a playable flame, frame rate or even just like a stable FPS and like a stable 60 in some or you'll sit in like 58 or if I can get that 30 to like 35, that, that would work wonders. I doubt I'll be able to get that high, but you know, it's worth it, especially for older cards. So it's your choice as to whether you want to overclock. One thing you can do that I've done uh, on some cases like a laptop where you can't increase the voltage is either undervolted a card and then push the clocks higher because your uh, temperature isn't as high and so you're not thermal throttling or even just left everything auto and stock in settings and then increased your, uh, like tightened your timings on RAM or increased your clocks. And that might run the card a little bit harder. Maybe it'll do some degradation over time, I'm not really sure, but it should be nowhere near as dangerous as increasing voltage because increasing voltage makes more power. But once again, it's in my experience, not really that dangerous. I've had one component die. I mean, that was a stick of RAM that was running a bunch of power through. So, I will post results, uh, like updates along the way, if any of my stuff dies and what specs I was running it at. But for now, basically, it's probably fine to overclock. Just, it's not my fault if you push the voltage too high and your card dies. I'd be happy to try to help you with overclocking, but when it comes to voltage, you really just need to look up your specific card on a forum and see like what people are saying for about the right amount is. But in general, I'd say start at like 5 millivolts, something small, and then work your way up. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will potentially be posting a more in-depth memory overclocking video later where I'm trying to actually get more performance out of the card with that. But for now, this will conclude this video, and hopefully I can figure out how to edit it because it's a lot of footage. Mm -hmm.